So in this video, I'll be walking through the task one section of one of the previous individuals and societies e-assessment papers. So in this task, you'll be using the key concept of global interactions and the related concept of choice to plan an investigation. As mentioned previously, task one always focuses on investigations and into trade agreements and their impact on fairness and development. Your responses will be assessed using criterion A, knowledge and understanding, and criterion B, investigating. These are always the criterions that you will, that will, that task one will always focus on. So you have been asked to conduct research into trade agreements and their impact on fairness and development. So later on, you'll be asked to formulate a research question, justify data collection, data recording, and all that as a way to show your investigation method. And an economic advisor carried out an investigation to assist you with your research and has given you the data information below. Read the information and answer the questions that follow. You will later be asked to evaluate this investigation. So most likely you'll be evaluating this investigation first, and later on they'll ask you to follow up by creating your own investigation. That's generally a format that's often followed. So before the investigation and all that, they generally ask you two to three questions. The number of marks will always be the same, but the number of questions may vary. The questions will be based off of a specific source that the question gives you. Generally, the first question will just be a one mark, a simple question where they ask you to select or identify something from the source. While the second question may ask you to explain a concept or idea. So looking at the first question, with reference to the trade agreements shown on the world map on slide three of source A, select the trade agreement with the highest exports in US dollars. So let's take a look at source A first. So I can only show using photos like this, but in the actual e-assessment platform, you'll be able to click next and next to, to go to different slides. So it focuses on trade agreements and their impact on fairness and development. The first thing they do is show the types of trade agreements, unilateral, bilateral, and multilateral, with a decent explanation on each. And as I mentioned before, one thing that you should always focus on when looking at these sources, because this is the source, this is also the investigation that the economic advisor had done. So this is a source that you'll be evaluating later on. So while you're actually just looking at the source, it's good to identify pieces of information that show methods of data collection, such as what can be seen down here. So it shows that the information is collected in 2015. It shows the year during an interview with an economics professor at Cambridge University in the UK. So they already show you the time period, they show you the type, the way they collected the data, and they showed you, so um, in a way, the expertise of the person being interviewed. So this could always be taken as a strength later on when you're doing your evaluation. Moving on, they show you different trade agreements in 2018, as well as the exports and imports in US dollars. So we know this is the type of information that we have to look at to answer question one. For European Union, 161.7 billion. Next, 300.4 billion. Followed by 17.7 .7 billion. And the last one is for three countries, 28.6 billion, 42.1 billion, and 14 billion. So even if we were to count all this together, we can see that NAFTA and USMCA has the highest number, has the amount, highest amount of US dollars for their exports. So the answer for question one would be NAFTA, USMCA, out of all the options given. But let's take a look at the rest of the source first. They also show you the pros and cons of trade agreements in slide four. And lastly, they talk about the World Trade Organization. So question one, as mentioned before, trade agreement, the highest exports in US dollars would be USMCA and NAFTA, option B. Next question, state one benefit for a country participating in a trade agreement. So what I wrote was access to lower price goods. And we can see that in one of the slides, they mentioned the pros and cons of trade agreements. So if we were to go back to that slide, you could, oh, you could choose any one of these answers. I chose the last one, but any one of these answers would give you 
the answer. Generally, these one mark questions can be easily found somehow, one way or the other, in the source being given to you. Next question, explain how countries can ensure fairness within trade agreements. So this question has four marks, meaning that quite a few, a lot of explanation to do. So these types of questions, you don't necessarily have to use the source, but using the source will also give you sort of a direct way to know what type of answer they're expecting. So as you can see, the question is also related to the global context fairness and development. So generally the entire paper you'll see will be focusing on this global context because that's how e-assessment works. So how I wrote this answer was countries can ensure fairness by choosing one type of trade agreement in which, for example, I compared the different trade agreements and showed how the multilateral trade agreement would be the best one to choose. So through this, I use evidence from the source given, which is always good because you can sort of see what type of answer they want. At times, they'll ask you to take evidence, but most of the time, they'll just ask you to explain. But when they mention it like this, normally they're expecting you to take some sort of evidence. So I just compare the different types of trade agreements. And then I show how trade agreements like bilateral and multilateral trade agreements makes it so that different countries can commonly loosen trade restrictions and can negotiate for to compromise for uh, sort of requirements that both countries would require to allow all countries to have fairness in a trade agreement. So just that explanation would earn you all the marks. And finally, the question, evaluate the investigation carried out by the economic advisor in source A. So three paragraphs, obviously. First paragraph would be on the strengths. Second paragraph, limitations. And last paragraph is on the appraisal. And eight marks, three for strengths, three for limitations, and two for appraisal. So as I mentioned before in the previous video, one strength, one limitation, that's more than enough. So if we were to see for my strengths, the one that I include was how the information on the exports and imports profit or obtained from a reliable source, the U.S. Census Bureau. If we were to look at the source once again, you can see that for each slide they mentioned, this information was collected using the U.S. Census Bureau in 2018. So it may be easy to miss, even though it's right there, but it's so it's good to keep an eye out for these methods of data collection as they'll help you a lot for the evaluation later on. So you can mention that it's a reliable source, but you also sort of have to explain because that's a, you have to explain why this is a strength. So you first explain why this specific source is that reliable. So I mentioned that the U.S. conducting trade in many other countries and they're one of the major countries involved in exports. So they have collected a lot of information on trade agreements occurring around the world. So the U.S. would be able to have lots of detailed information and hence it makes this source very reliable. And then also after mentioning its reliability, also a line as to why this reliability is important for the investigation. So such credible uh, information allows the accuracy of the investigation to be verified. That's certainly the strength you can write. And a limitation would be just how the research does not manage to fully answer the research question. So we can also, we can already see how, if we were to look at it back here, you can see you have been conduct, asked to conduct research into trade agreements and their impact on fairness and development. So the research mainly focuses on trade agreements and impact on fairness and development. So because that's what the because the economic advisor carried an investigation to assist you with your research. So their research question should be the same as yours. So you'll also have to be able to identify the purpose of investigation based off of the information that they give you. So a limitation I wrote was that the research does not fully manage to answer the research question because while the research question focuses on trade agreements and its impact on fairness and development, the source does not fully manage to show that. It introduces the meaning of trade agreements, real life examples, as well as pros and cons, but there's no emphasis or sort of explanation as to how trade agreements somehow promote fairness among the countries involved. 
as well as how each country managed to develop through the trade agreements. So just one line at the end, how it affects the investigation. This causes the research to stray from the main purpose, negatively impacting the quality of the investigation. So it, the research question is actually very important because if you look at the source, you'll think it's very good source. It shows a lot of information, but by the end of the day, if it doesn't answer the research question, it's not an effective research. So in conclusion, you mentioned whether the investigation was effective, satisfactory, or not effective. I mentioned that it was not effective because you have to evaluate it a bit. You have to show the, pro the pros based on the strengths you mentioned, followed by the cons from the limitations that you mentioned, and then of overall appraisal. So very variety of information were actually provided, and all of it was obtained from a reliable source. This is from my strength. However, this type of information is limited when it is not especially connected to fairness and development. This is my limitation. So without any explanation on such connections, the research has failed to effectively answer the research question and is thus ineffective. So I connected it to the strengths and limitations and came up with the final appraisal. And that's how you score all the eight marks for this question. So in to investigate further into how trade agreements impact on fairness and development, you will need to formulate a detailed action plan by completing the questions below. As a government official in a country of your choice, you have been asked to make a recommendation about how this country should approach trade in the future. So the first question as expected, formulate a clear and focused research question for an investigation that would help you make a recommendation. So the moment they already say a country of your choice, it should click in your mind that you have to think of a specific country. You can't just be saying, to what extent can something allow a country to do this? The moment they say a country of your choice, you choose a country for clarity. So if you were to take a look at my research question, to what extent can joining the Capital DR agreement allow Canada to sell more products? We can see that I start my research question with to what extent because it helps to make my question more open-ended so that it's not a simple yes or no answer. And I try to make it as focused and clear as possible. So I mentioned the specific country, Canada, and I also mentioned the specific trade, um, trade agreement instead of just simply mentioning trade agreement. And I also sort of gave a way to measure the possible benefit that this agreement would have in which if this is a good agreement, it would help Canada to sell more products. So that's how I made my, because when you test something, you have to also have a way to measure the impact of it. So the way I chose to measure the impact was to see whether or not Canada will be able to sell more products or not. So this would be able to score two marks. And the next part would be justifying the relevance of your research question with reference to your investigation. First is to mention what my research question is about, how Canada can increase exports and sell more products by joining this agreement, and why it's relevant to the area of research. This is relevant because a multilateral trade agreement would increase the possibility of sales being made in Canada with other countries. And just some further explanation here, could increase the demand coming from the Dominican Republic in Costa Rica. And this would help me make my recommendation, as in the benefit that this research question would have towards the government, which is because I'm a government, in this situation, I'm a government official. So the research I'll be doing is for the government. And one method of primary data collection you could use for your investigation. Make sure to read the question properly to choose a primary data. Sometimes they specify this. Sometimes they just say method of data collection. But if they say you have to read the question properly to decide which. And you could just say an interview, but it's best to be specific with who the interview is going to take place with at the very least. And if you can, because at times, in this case, the command term is state. For example, the command term is outline then you should be mentioning, okay, you should mention it's a research. Who are you going to, it's an interview. Who are you going to interview? What are you going to ask the interviewee? What type of questions there, will there be? And what are you hoping to get? What type of information are you hoping to get through the interview? Because uh, in this situation, you can see the next question. It says outline the usefulness of the method. So it separates the question, but sometimes they just make it into one question. 
And yeah, the purpose of the interview could get accurate data on possible increase in sales when joining a larger market. State one method. So voice recording, it's just, it doesn't have to be anything that grand. A simple voice or audio recording would be okay, specifically for interview. It could also be spreadsheets, note-taking, summarizing, graphs, or anything of the sort. And outline the usefulness of the method. You may also have to keep asking the interviewee questions on the spot and to make sure you get as much information as possible. And as you keep doing that, you're too focused, you may lose some of the information you got before. So a recording is always helpful to ensure that you have all the answers that you'll need by the end of the investigation. Um, and that's it for the walkthrough of Task One for Individuals and Society. Thank you for watching.